Welcome to the first video of my lecture series on Introduction to Complex Analysis. Complex analysis finds its application in every branch of science. In this video, I will explain how the notion of imaginary or complex numbers was born. Believe me, the derivation that you will witness in the next half an hour will be truly amazing. So, let's start. To start with, let us consider a simple quadratic equation described as x square equal to mx plus b. This quadratic equation can be solved by Sridhar Acharya formula and the solution can be written as x equal to m by 2 plus minus square root of m square divided by 4 plus b. If you try to plot the solution graphically, the solution will look something like this. The solution will lie at the intersection of the two curves y equal to x square and y equal to mx plus b. For a particular choice of m and b, y equal to mx plus b will be a straight line. For example, uh, in this case, the straight line may be this which are these two are the intersecting points. So this is our straight line y equal to mx plus b and the point yellow points are the solution the intersection of the two curves for a particular choice of m and b this is the straight line i am assuming as an example let us consider the a simple equation say x square equal to 4 into x plus 5 that means i am assuming m as 4 and b as 5 Therefore, by simply plugging in the value of m and b in the formula that is in the left hand side, we get x equal to 4 by 2, that is 2 plus minus square root of 4 square by 4, that is 4 plus 5. So that means equal to 2 plus minus root square root of 9. So that is 2 plus minus 3. So that means the solution is given by 5 and minus 1. It's pretty simple. All of us can do it. Let us consider another example. Consider an equation which is obtained by plugging in m equals to 0 and b equals to minus 1. That means I'm talking about the equation x squared equals to minus 1. Now, this is a bit confusing case because if you plug in the value of m and b in the formula which is there in the left hand side, we get x is equal to 0 by 2, so that is 0, plus minus square root of 0 square by 4, 0 minus 1. Now, what is the value of this expression? A value of this expression will be that number whose square is a negative number, whose square is actually minus 1 in this case. Now, at that point of time, you know, early days in the first half of 15th century it is almost impossible for people to imagine about a number whose square is a negative number and consequently they thought that these kind of forms are irreducible and this kind of equations cannot be solved but some people argue that the equation x square equal to minus 1 or an attempt to solve the equation x square equal to minus 1 led to the discovery of imaginary numbers, which historically is not correct because the solution of the equation x square equal to minus 1 was not visible to people at that time. That's why they did not bother about the solution of this equation. If we plot it, if we try to plot the solution of x square equal to minus 1, we can understand in a better way. 
the solution of x square equal to minus 1 will lie at the intersecting point of y equal to x square and y equal to say minus 1 y equal to minus 1 say this this is y equal to minus 1 so the solution of x square the solution of x square equals to minus 1 will lie at the intersection of these two uh, uh, curves y equal to x square and y equal to minus 1 but they are not intersecting hence people did not bother about their solution they thought that they cannot be solved these equations cannot be solved because they cannot visualize the solution that means x square equal to minus 1 is not the reason for birth of imaginary numbers now the question is if not x squared equals to minus 1 then what you can ask me if x square e equals to minus 1 is not the reason then what is the reason the reason actually the reason actually lies in the attempt of solving equation of the form x cube equals to px plus q now you can ask me what is the speciality of equation x cube equal to px plus q to understand the speciality we need to plot let us consider the graph of y equal to x cube the graph somehow will look like this i'm sure you can draw a better diagram than this say this is y equal to x cube so the solution of y equal to x uh, x cube equal to px plus q will lie at the intersection of y equal to x cube and y equal to px plus q now what is px plus q px plus q y equal to px plus q is a straight line for a specific value of p and q now for a specific value of p and q the straight line may be like this the straight line may be like this the straight line may be like this the straight line may be anything but the point to note is that whatever be the straight line you will get the straight line surely intersecting the curve y equal to x cube at least at one point think about the reason why this is happening here which is not happening in the earlier case the reason is y equal to x cube spans towards infinity in both the upper half and lower half of x axis in both the sides whereas in the earlier case y equal to x square was spanned only in the upper half of x axis so all the straight lines which are lying solely in this portion will not intersect and uh, uh, people fail to visualize so they did not bother but in this case every straight line whatever be it will surely intersect the curve y equal to x cube because the curve y equal to x cube spans in both the sides so people visualized there is at least one solution people visualized the solution they identified the point and they tried to find the value of it how they uh, used to find the value the most efficient technique was designed by three mathematicians del ferro del ferro tartaglia del ferro tartaglia del ferro uh, uh, 1465 to 1526 tartaglia tartaglia yes tartaglia uh, 1499 to 1577 and later joined by cardano 1501 to 1576 these three italian mathematicians devised or designed or discovered the most efficient method to solve what is the method if our equation is x cube equal to px plus q then they discovered 
that the solution of this equation can be written as x equal to cube root of squared root of q square divided by 4 minus p cube divided by 27 plus q by 2 minus cube root of squared root of q square by 4 minus p cube by 27 minus q by 2. Now this looks a bit big but easy to remember. You can see that these terms are same in both the expressions. So eventually it's very easy to remember you can if you identify this. So now let's try to use it. Let us solve a problem using this formula. Uh, let us consider a simple cubic equation of the form x cube equal to px plus q given by x cube is equal to say minus 6x plus 20. So that means for this particular problem our p is minus 6 this is our p and our q is 20 so this is our q our p is minus 6 and our q is 20 so actually this is 20 q is 20 so fine let us plug in the value of p and q in the above formula and if we plug in we get x equal to cube root of squared root of q square by 4 so 400 by 400 minus p cube minus 6 whole q minus 216 by 27 that is minus 8 so 100 minus minus 8 so 108 plus q by 2 10 minus cube root of same 108 minus 10. If you calculate, you may use a calculator for now and you can check very easily that the value for this will be 2.73 minus 0 0.73. So that is equal to 2. And you can cross check that 2 satisfies this equation also. So it's a beautiful method and very easy method. So this kind of cubic equations was being effectively solved by this formula. Everything was very nice. But there had been a twist after say about 30 years of the discovery of this formula. A person named Bombelli A person named Bombelli, 1526 to 1572. A person named Bombelli found an equation which created lots of confusion and the attempt of solving that equation gave us a breakthrough. The equation was x cube equals to 15 into x plus 4. So here our values will be means if we compare with the form x cube equal to px plus q. So here my p is 15 and q is 4. So the equations are 15 and 4. p and q are 15 and 4. Now simply we can plug in 15 and 4 in this formula and if, if we calculate we will get the value for x. So if we plug in the value of p and q in the formula devised by Cardano et al, we get x equal to, you can simply plug in and check. I'm writing the final result. Cube root of 2 plus square root of minus 121 plus cube root of 
टू माइनस स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ माइनस हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी वन दिस दे हैव गॉट now has a form it is okay but people are confused what is its value how to simplify further because to simplify you need to get the value of this expression and the same problem a value of this expression means a value whose square will be minus 121 that means a number whose square is a negative number people at that time could not imagine about any such number and eventually cardano said that these kind of forms are irreducible and you cannot solve this equation equation but something stuck in bombelli's mind he did not give up bombelli have seen that bombelli has seen that had seen that this number minus 121 can be written as equal to square root of 121 Into square root of minus one. That means eleven into square root of one. Then Bombelli thought that the entire chaos is created by this number square root of minus one. So Bombelli then thought somehow, without thinking much about its geometric behavior, if some rules for doing arithmetic with this number can be proposed and if this expressions this expressions cube root of this and this if these expressions can be represented in the form of a plus b into square root of minus 1 then maybe by doing some calculations and manipulations he can get a better representation for x to do that what bombelli proposed is known as his wild thought he proposed three basic assumptions i am naming as bombelli proposition 1 2 and 3 bombelli proposition 1 is a1 squared root of minus 1 plus a2 Square root of minus one is equal to a one plus a two square root of minus one. Bombelli proposition two. A one square root of minus one into a two square root of minus one is equal to a one into a two into minus one. and bombelli proposition 3 if a plus b square root of minus 1 is equal to c plus d square root of minus 1 then a equal to c and b equal to d based on these three propositions bombelli found out a smart way of representing this numbers and eventually we got a breakthrough he considered a plus b whole cube is equal to 2 plus square root of minus 121 now splitting sorry a plus b sorry he proposed extremely sorry he proposed a plus b a plus b square root of minus 1 whole cube is equal to 2 plus square root of minus 121 now if this whole cube is split then we get A into a square minus three b squared is equal to, sorry, plus b into three a square minus b square is equal to into, sorry, into. Into square root of minus one is equal to two plus 
11 square root of minus 1. How this is obtained? Pretty simple. How this is obtained? Pretty simple. Split this expression using the formula x plus y whole cube equal to x cube plus y cube plus 3xy into x plus y. Then separate the terms which are containing this square root of minus 1 and which are not containing this square root of minus 1. You can get this, uh, you can get an arrangement like this. Now, if I use the third proposition of Bombelli, if I use now the third proposition of Bombelli, we can write, so using the third proposition of Bombelli, we can write a into a square minus 3b square is equal to 2 and b into 3a square minus b square is equal to 11. But the point to note is that this 2 is a prime number which is written as a product of these two numbers. Hence, one of these two numbers must be 1. Same for 11 which is a prime written as a product of these two numbers. Hence, one of these two numbers must be 1. Consider in this case a as 2 and the other factor a square minus 3b square as 1. And in this case, b as 1 and the other factor 3a square minus b square is equal to 11. Which can be checked also. If a is 2 then and b is 1, then a square minus 3b square is equal to 2 square minus 3. So that is 1. And in this case, 3a square minus b square equal to 3 into 2 square. So 12 minus 1, that is, so 12 minus 1, that is, 11. So, this is 11. Fine. So, this assumption fits in well and you can see that other assumptions will lead to infeasibility. So, this is the only possible solution in this case. So, from where we started? We started from this point. Our assumption was a plus b square root of minus 1 whole cube equal to this and we got the value for a and b. So, if we plug in, we get 2 plus square root of minus 1 whole cube is equal to 2 plus square root of minus 121. That is 2 plus square root of minus 121, the cube root of this number will be equal to 2 plus square root of minus 1, pretty simple. By exactly a similar mode of calculation, by exactly in a similar mode of calculation, similarly, Bombelli found that 2 minus square root of minus 1 whole cube is equal to 2 minus square root of minus 121. That is, cube root of 2 minus square root of minus 121 is equal to 2 minus square root of minus 1. Now, our equation was x cube equal to 15x plus 4. By methods proposed by Cardano et al, we got that x the solution can be written as cube root of 2 plus square root of minus 121 plus cube root of 2 minus square root of minus 121. And by the solution or by the discovery of Bombelli, we got that 2 plus these expressions cube root of 2 plus square root of minus 121 and cube root of 2 minus 121 can be written in this way. So, if we use if we use those particular values and simply plug in the values we get this as 2 plus square root of minus 1 plus 2 minus square root of minus 1. Simply 
these two terms cancels out and we get this equal to 4. You can check that 4 satisfies the equation as well. If you plug in, therefore, we get x equal to 4. If you plug in 4 in the equation, you get it satisfied. So, the equation, Cardano's method, Bombelli's discovery, and we got the answer so nicely. Now, Bombelli's discovery is considered as a part of complex analysis. And the three propositions that Bombelli proposed, the three pro basic propositions that Bombelli proposed are considered as a pillar of this discovery. These three propositions that Bombelli proposed are considered as a pillar or key to this discovery. And this number square root of minus 1, this number square root of minus 1, this has been the key, the key element in this entire discovery is how Bombelli managed or how Bombelli performed arithmetical operations using this, uh, uh, with this number square root of minus 1. That was his brilliance. And eventually, this number squared root of minus 1 got a very special position or status in mathematics. But at that time, all conceivable numbers were either greater than 0 or less than 0 or equal to 0 by rules of trichotomy. You can understand clearly that this number cannot be put in that category. Hence, people started calling these numbers as fancied number or imaginary number and started denoting this number by I representing it its imaginary uh, uh, characteristic as per their understanding at that point of time. And eventually, lots of other theories has been proposed, other formula has been proposed, but the key lies in the assumptions of Bombelli or Bombelli's propositions and eventually complex analysis was born. So, this is the story in brief about how complex analysis was born and square root of minus 1, popularly denoted by small i in mathematics, came into play. Initially, people were skeptical about these numbers as they were not able to visualize these numbers in graphs. It took almost 200 years a person named Leonard Euler made significant contributions and this branch of mathematics became almost indispensable. In my next video, I will discuss about the geometry of these numbers and will try to have a visualization of these numbers.